Hello, 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 hello. It's good to see you. Say hello. Welcome to the Huskies Hockey Podcast, your number one resource for all things all-time Husky hockey draft related. We got a star-studded lineup for you uh, here. We got, uh, obviously, myself, uh, no introduction needed. Andrew, no introduction needed. This is a special episode here. Usually our special episodes are directed more for, uh, you know, uh, pairwise prediction regionals that Andrew just ends up nailing. And this is a little more off the cup. This is a little more exciting. What do you think? I like it. I could do another random. I could do another pairwise prediction if you want uh, a very early one for next year, but probably won't be as 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 spot on as they generally are. As spot on. Well, where's Brown going to finish? I think that's what's. Uh, they are the number on. one overall. <laughs> so we, um, you know, uh, we're going to kick off to it here just shortly. I do have a correction uh, that I need to make. You done messed up, A.A. Ron. Uh, biggest thing, uh, I messed up actually two episodes ago and Andrew, if we were talking about Dylan Anhorn and his major mm-hmm. about how, um, uh, it was said on the announcement that it was the Bobby Gepford elective studies or whatever it was. Um, but it turns out, what was it? What did you say it was? Something like that. Yeah. Or... Something smarty pants, uh, way above my pay grade. Do you have a correction on that? So I, I. I, I do not have a correction on that. I have a correction because uh, I asked, uh, I said Jason Bryant uh, would have a story about that. He was not the PA announcer for the last uh, two series at the uh, Herb Brooks National Hockey Center. He was uh, doing wrestling, wrestling nationals. So I want to apologize uh, for my podcast in May or yeah, May about that. Um, but uh, so somebody else fills in. And when Jason Bryant isn't there, everything falls apart. I think that's what we can glean from that. I also have a fact check on last week's podcast. I had speculated whether Randy Schmidt was the basis for the Eagles. I got two guys conflated, Randy Meisner and (laughs) Timothy B. Schmidt, who were both bassists. Schmidt replaced Meisner. Um, And so I sort of conflated those two names into Randy Schmidt. Uh, So my apologies to both of those gentlemen. And uh, that is your classic rock uh, corner for, for the podcast as well. Were they bassists for the same band? They actually were. They came from the band called Poco. Uh, and so then Meisner was the first bassist for the Eagles. And then I think he was just there for their first album. And then he went on to other things. And Timothy B. Schmidt, who was also from Poco, replaced him. So they were actually in the same band before the Eagles. But they were never in the Eagles together. So, fun fact. God, I just... Uh... You know, I've had a I've had a long day, and I hate the <laughs> Eagles, man. So, yes. um, so let's let let's get the let's get going with this draft. Let's do it. Uh, quick rundown, quick rundown of the rules uh, here, just so everybody is aware. We got eight rounds. We're drafting. Your main line is going to be three forwards, two uh, D, one goalie, and then uh, you got an extra forward and extra defense. Obviously, you can put them anywhere you want. You know, if you want to draft four forwards right off the hop, rounds one through four, go right ahead. Um, but that's going to be kind of your lineup. And uh, we got four rounds, or we got four uh, four teams that are going to be competing. Obviously, Weldy and Andrew. Uh, but uh, we've got uh, two special guests that are on the podcast that are waiting so quietly and have zero opinions on the Eagles. Or maybe they've got plenty if they want to sh- go ahead and share that as well. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, start out with the. Uh, let's go start up with uh, Team Euro Disney. Uh, Eric Zamora, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and uh, how you fell in love with Huskies hockey. Um, I have strong takes on the Eagles, and I think they are one of the most overrated bands of all time. Um, <clears throat> uh, Hotel California is one of the most overrated songs of all time. Uh, I attended uh, St. Cloud State starting in 2001, and the first game that I ever went to live set two records. Goal scored in a period by St. Cloud State, and goal scored by a player for St. Cloud State, when Mark Hardigan scored four 
in a 7 to 4 victory over Anchorage, Anchorage. Yep. and all 11 goals were at the other end. <laughs> um that was the first game I ever went to live and um I've been going to as many as I can since. Uh, honestly, while I was at St. Cloud State, uh, pretty much just went to home games and then uh once I started to have some disposable income, um the herbs great going to home games is great when you know the team scores and thousands of people make noise but it's way more fun when the team scores and dozens of people uh make noise and uh yeah had some uh real uh good memories with a lot of the road trips i'd say honestly uh the road trips uh kind of top the the home games for me these days yep. i got gotcha. you favorite road trip um, you mean like one instance or you're saying the, the destination, I would say destination. I mean, the instance is probably, uh, us in Madison when we got hammered after Ravy scored, uh, there's that there's also North Dakota, but I'm going to go Huntsville. Wow. Huntsville. And you were down there when Dowd was there, right? Mm. Yeah. Cause, um, you, you had the wigs. We were making, yeah, we were making some noise and some guys invited us to go sit with them and it turned out to be, uh, Dowd's brothers. And then we just kind of. Got to experience the hockey capital of the South. Right. So, there you go. I think Hardy score uh, hit, hit hit two off the pipe too in that in that game too. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, hey, you think he's going to get drafted? I don't know. He might be up there. Uh, it's 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 only eight rounds. <laughs> it's only eight rounds. I don't know if there's going to be enough for him. <laughs> Uh, and that last voice you heard, obviously the one and only, uh, the, the Twitter troll, the Stearns County go Huskies. Woo. Um, don't even know if you're in Stearns County. I don't even know anything about you, but here you are on the podcast. First off, thank you so much for gracing us with your presence and, uh, your clicks really is actually all I care about. Understood. I, I get it. And, and it's nice. Thanks for inviting me. Um, I do get asked onto other podcasts that I do turn down and, <laughs> Um, are 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 they uh, a particular North Dakota <laughs> player? A, a one in particular. That's exactly <laughs> correct. Love that guy. Um, <laughs> so no, uh, thanks. No, this is gonna be fun. I, I, I this is the probably the best uh, podcast related to Huskies hockey that there is. Um, I like how you two are very um, objective. The the call outs, the references are funny to me, uh, but I like it's not a lot of gloss overing when we're bad um, and when we play poorly, uh, but you give credit when the credit's due. So this is actually a really good one. And so um, I'm actually very honored to be here. It's going to be pretty cool. I'm not used to praise like yeah. this. Is a, this is a this is <laughs> this is a weird spot to be in right now. So, like, when did when did your love affair of Huskies hockey start? Um. I attended my first game in 97, so it's getting on to be quite a while now, um, and the stadium was loud, the, you know, the National Hockey Center was very loud, it was against Notre Dame, mm. um, and it was uh, fun and awesome, and the Huskies lost, but it still kicked ass, and so basically after that, I was like, I'm going to continue to do this. Yeah, I think the first Huskies game I went to was a like an eight to three loss to North Dakota in the final five at the Target Center when it was there for a year. The so. yeah, the it, so, it's not always if, if they win; it's just kind of that that, that atmosphere and the camaraderie you feel with whomever else. And that I think that's exactly what happened. Um, mm-hmm. I thought I could get behind this. This is this team. A uh, team. A uh, Ne'er do wells. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna join this fun group. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, we'll uh, we'll go ahead. We don't we don't know the order uh, right now. Uh, what we got here is that we got a a fun little uh, wheel of destiny uh, that we're gonna spin, and uh, this wheel of destiny is not gonna pick where you're drafting but you're going to pick what position you want to draft. So okay. we'll go ahead and spin that right now. Uh, and it's going to land on oh, me. Oh, rigged. Uh, rigged. <laughs> Don't give me that. You want me to spin it again? I'll spin it again. Uh, no. I mean, it's just going to be you again, so why right. bother? 
<laughs> God, I really hope it is me. Oh my God, it, no, it, no. It's yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. Of course. All right. Well, fates have spoken. Um, R- rigged have spoken. R- R- the R- exactly. I, mean, I was even thinking of removing myself from this entirely just to avoid this scenario. Uh, so we see you did I'm, it, though. So. Yep, exactly. Uh, so actually, I am going to draft third. That was what I was going to pick. I think that's the ideal uh, spot. So. So the next one is uh, Eric. I'll take the one spot. Taking the one. And Andrew. I'll take four. All right. Perfect. Andrew in the four. All I'll right. pick. So, I'll I'll pick then the other one. <laughs> yeah. Does he still get a choice? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> spin spin it for me. Yep. 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 There you go. Landed right on it. So uh, nailed it. All right. Perfect. Sounds good. With the first overall pick in the Huskies Hockey All Time Draft, we're uh, er- Eric. Where are you going? Um, so I kind of did some uh, looking to see if there was any sort of advantage that I thought of even picking another one. But basically, since I've been doing the research, um, how do you not go, one, asking for the one pick? And I'm going to take Mark Hardigan. There's no other choice. Um, been mine the best choice well. you pick. There's no other choice. He had the most points per game. He had the most goals per game. And his worst season in goals was like tied for 13th in the uh, all-time seasons. And then his second and first, I should say in, in the D1 era. Oh, and yeah. then his sophomore year was in the top five and his junior year was in the, uh, was the number one. So, you know, this, this time around, Hardy does not get robbed. I got to go Mark Hardigan. <laughs> and um, I should also... Uh... You know, maybe it was understood, maybe it's not, but like this is Division One era, so we can cross off really uh, Brimsack really? off everyone's boards. Oh, are, are you, are you so, serious? Oh, I, I thought I was thinking the entire afternoon that was my ace in the hole. Uh, I was going to be so clever. It sounds like other people had that idea too, though. So <laughs> I don't know why we're making that stipulation, but um, okay, okay. You know what? Fine. Let's well, now the cat's then. out of the bag. Fine. You want to put. No, you want to put Brimsack? Go right ahead. I think I think people can do it. My whole my thought process, though, as I was going through this, was I don't want any of the Division Two guys because it's too hard to look. There's already enough math in this. I didn't want to have to sit there and go, well, if that person scored this much in the D two era, how would they have done against you know in their thirteen games? But 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 if somebody else wants to take D two guys, I got no problem with it. (laughs) Mike Brodzinski too. Oh, there's yeah. yeah, no, there's a D two guy I was thinking of as well. So. All right, everyone's unhappy uh, with that rule. Fine, I, all I time, mean, anyone, whatever. Yeah, go ahead. Honestly, look, Mark Hardigan. Uh, I, I remembered when Johnny Brodzinski said he was going to turn pro. It was like a, a April April Fool's Day, um, and I was thinking, what what a prolific scorer Johnny Brodzinski was. And he had like a chance of getting close to Mark Hardigan in four years, what Mark did in three. And mm-hmm. so yeah. that, it, it, I don't know if everybody knows Mark Hardigan or whatever, but like that, that dude scored and that, it, he just, he just scored all the time. And so like someone like John Rodzinski couldn't even like touch him in three years, you know, let alone get, let alone bypass him in four. That, that, that is what makes him so incredible. Excellent. Yeah, just, just, just a dynamic person right off, right when he, every, every time that he touched the ice and, you know, obviously, you know, the, the game is, you know, a little bit different and whatnot, but, um, you know, those top end guys in that college era uh, or that, uh, that era, that team, I mean, that's not the last pick you'll see of that team, but, um, yeah, it was just, um, he was something to watch. Um, that's for sure. I have a picture with Mark Hardy 
at D.B. Searles getting wasted. <laughs> and I have it signed. Oh, nice. <laughs> it was that when he was up for the, uh, I don't know, he came up a couple years ago. Or was it just last night? I've had it for a while. Oh, you've had it for a while? Okay. It's a, it's magnificent. It is, it is a prized possession. So if you so if there's a fire in your house, that's the one thing you're going to get. Everything else can burn. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's basically. <laughs> See that? Uh, Goweski's woo number two pick. <sighs> this is hard. I really didn't plan for two. I planned for one. Uh, <laughs> it's not ideal for me, um, and I did no prep. Okay, so um, this is totally off the seat, uh, flying off the seat of my pants here. Um, but I think that I'll go with. Whom I believe, and I, and I think there's going to be people, people who might disagree with me, but I'm going to take the greatest defenseman to play at St. Cloud State. Nick Jensen. Nick Jensen, first defenseman off the board. It's a high value pick. Uh, you only get you know two starters, and I, you know, I think a lot of people will say, "Oh, Brett Hedekin, blah blah blah, whatever." But boy, I, I mean, we just did, yeah. <laughs> Nick Jensen. Nick Jensen is is my man. That guy ruled. It's a quality pick. He was my number two defenseman on my board, uh, and I would have loved to have had him. So that's a good snake. Yeah, J- Jensen was a lot of fun to watch. Um, and... Best skater, just the best skater. How fast did he like look when he like had the puck and like or just chased down a dude? He would take like three strides and be at the end of the ice. Mm-hmm. And his dad was a lot of fun to drink with, so there's that. <laughs> that also can help you move up the the draft boards as well. For sure, for sure. So I've got the third pick. Um, I'm not gonna lie; I'm a little surprised at Nick Jensen. Um, but I mean, it's understandable because uh, I am actually going to go defenseman as well. Um, cause I feel like we're good on forwards. We're, we're really deep on forwards, but there was uh, a defenseman I specifically wanted and, uh, hip check his freshman year aside. I'm going Jimmy Schultz. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't bring that up anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ferris state. It was on my birthday. It hurt. I, <laughs> oh, wrong color. So, but, um, there's some really yeah. awesome things about like Jimmy Shelby, like look at his, like, I, I promise I didn't do any stats or stuff, but like Jimmy Shelby had, he had, you know, he played for four years, right? And one year he had a plus minus rating that was in the negative, um, when he was paired with another Husky, of course, who, who, who shan't be named. And the, the other three plus his negative, and he's still the number one dude in plus minus. Yep. That is incredible. Yeah, and, you know, people, I think uh, people can rag on plus minus all they want, but I think it still has a little bit of value when it comes to that. And just, um, I thought just how dynamic and how creative, you know, uh, he was with the puck versus I think Nick, Nick Jensen was probably smoother with it. But um, I thought Jimmy Schultz was just, as far as just pure playmaking ability, that's uh, that's why I put him. I actually had him number one on my board for defenseman, and that was going to be my pick if I wasn't number one, which I, I didn't know if I wanted to be. So, and and Schultz, then you also go back to the leadership and being a captain all those years, and nobody from the blue line scored more goals per game in the history of Husky's hockey. I I, I can't. Uh, fault to there for going Jimmy. A husky right. through and through. Yep. Andrew. Yeah, so I get the next two, so I suppose it really doesn't matter what yep. order I'm going to go with these two, but... Well, there's the fifth-year option that you get to pick up. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it's it's a signing bonus deal, for it, sure, yeah. Uh, well, we're, it's the NIL you know, money. We're talking about with Schultz, character guy... And that's that's a big factor in this pick, but hey, I got a Hobie Baker award winner out there. I'm going to go with my four, with the fourth pick. I'm going to go with Drew LeBlanc. Drew LeBlanc. Yeah, 
Yeah, when you're talking about character, humble. I mean, just everything about Drew LeBlanc. Um, he was he, just a solid two-way player, you know, put up some points. Um, you know, you can say he did win Hobie the right year. Um, and, but at the same time, you know, coming back from, you know, I was at that game when he smashed his leg up. I, I mean, as it, that was the loudest silence I ever heard. Um, able to come back and pull put up the season he did. Um, was uh, was something special, and really fun to watch, and ended it with the, you know, first trip for the Huskies to the Frozen Four. It's uh, you're right, right there with the character. Yeah, because I'm sure there's. I mean, I'm looking at my list of candidates here, and I'm sure there's guys that are technically more talented. But I think he had he yeah. brought the intangible that that goes a long way, I suppose. He was an incredible passer. Let's yeah, not, let's not yeah, it, beat around the bush. He was just he could he just found ways whether he saucer passes, snipes through traffic. He put it on people's tape. That was incredible. Yeah, and maybe this is a, sort of an emotional pick because, uh, yeah that that season in particular was such a special one, and so, um, yeah, it was a tough it's a tough call. But that's what I'm going to go with for the fourth. No game. other team is going to have a Hobie Baker winner. This is true. So, and I guess coming around, right. first pick of round two. Again, it's 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 a typical choice. Do I, do I get another forward, or do I pick that top defenseman on my board? And I think I'm going to do that. And that will be Brett Hedekin. Obviously, was at St. Cloud before my time of being a St. Cloud State fan. But, you know, watching his NHL career for so long uh, and time at the Olympics. And, I mean, he's a brand in and of itself. Do I also get to pick uh, Christy Yamaguchi for this pick? I think it's like a tandem pick. I suppose. Yeah, well, I think she comes along with it. So it's, yeah. You get a couple of medals. That's fine. It, oh, I mean, package. really, actually, I should put I should put in here in in our master spreadsheet, Chrissy Yamaguchi Sasha, slash. Right. Right. Yes, I think that's the correct order uh, here. So, so yes, I may maybe bending the rules by picking two yeah. um, with this pick, but I think we're we're gonna let this one slide. So yeah, I'm gonna. He was my top defenseman on my sheet. Schalt and Jensen. I said Jensen was my number two. Schalt was up there as well. Both good picks. Uh, but I'm throwing a bone to our older listeners. So, uh, and I was I mean, prepared to uh, throw a bone to our really older listeners by going Frank Brimsek, but I'm waiting for that. So, uh, <laughs> wait, wait for that till. Yeah. So I want to spread uh, out the eras a little bit here, and but also pick up a, a hell of a defense. So that's what I'm going with with Hedekin. Yep. Yep. Exactly. I mean, obviously, you know, it was a. You know, my uh, my mom is from the area, um, but, you know, she said just the whole thought process that um, St. Cloud was going to go D1 in hockey was just laughed at. Like, it was absolutely just a ridiculous premise um, that we'd be able to even share the ice surface with uh, the Gophers in Duluth. Um, but, you know, Hedekin really helped put uh, St. Cloud State really um, – uh, on the on the map when it comes to you know the talent that we could get here. So, and obviously his numbers in the rafters, so that helps too. Yes, it does a bit. So uh, I got the next pick in the second round, and um, well, I'm going Ryan Lash. It's <laughs> uh, hard. hard to argue. <laughs> All time uh, leading scorer in Saint Cloud State history. Um, just, uh, just a sneaky dynamic, quick wrist, just soft spot of the ice. Just all of a sudden it's in the back of the net. Um, how many goals did Ryan Lash score backdoor? Uh, the grand majority. Uh, all of yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, maybe he had a breakaway or two in there, but it, uh. How did he go unmarked all the time? It's just amazing. Yeah. I legit was remember being in the student section and like out loud talking to the people around me on a game where he had like two same spot 
And I just go, did they ever think about sending somebody over there? Like, yeah, okay, so you're going to have a little bit of a mismatch somewhere else. Have somebody else be the guy that beats you. Don't have it be 19 just burying them goal after goal. Yeah, it was... I mean, that team and the team are kind of around that area is kind of kind of an enigma because you had you know so many high high scorers and you know probably a goalie that's going to be drafted from that time. But like, I don't know, we were just always on the fringe or just like not quite able to make the tournament um, in, in in some of those years where um, you know. Lash could have got maybe a little more recognition around the nation, but I think they made, I think they made the um, tournament three out of his four years. I mean, he was oh was, was he oh six oh seven was his first year. Oh six yeah, that was the main year. And then Clarkson was the year after, and then oh, um, God, I forgot about Clarkson then the Northern Michigan Clarkson. in his senior God, year. Yeah. So they didn't they didn't make it that one the oh eight oh nine season, but yeah, Tony the Tony Mosey, <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, that was Tony Mosey's. Tony Mosey was scored in double overtime again. Which one hurt more, the, the main loss or the Clarkson loss? Clarkson. They were both bad. Yeah, Cl- Clarkson because we, in it, like we should well, have They were in it longer. Them. They could have won both of them, but they were in it longer against Clarkson. And Ben Bishop. Speaking of, Lash, did he... I mean, he didn't score it in the main <laughs> game or the Clarkson game because those were both defensemen that scored their single goals there. Did he score in the Northern Michigan game or the Wisconsin game in 2010? I mean, we know we know are Tony you, uh, Moses. Are you, are you going to get me on the clutch? Are you saying he's not clutch? Is that I'm just uh, no. I, it, he me? was not the. Re- I mean, there was many reasons for Saint Claude choking in those years. Um, <laughs> but but sure, you, the, the all time leading say, scorer being okay. absent from the score sheet again. I might have forgotten him scoring in either of those 2010 games, but. I was going to say, I want to say that Roe had two against Northern Michigan, so unless it was the f- the other one, Lash, uh, I don't think he did. Uh, Lash scored against um, Wisconsin. Northern Wisconsin? Michigan. Oh, okay. Northern so what was, who was the goal scorer there? Scored. Was it him, Roe, and um, Mosey? No, Novak from LeBlanc. Novak. Um, <laughs> uh, Lash from Roe and LeBlanc. Was Novak shorthanded? It seemed like all of his goals were shorties. <laughs> it was not, actually. Um, Lash from Roe and Raboin. Um, Roe from Lash oh, and Marvin. Four to three, that's right. Okay, I was thinking it's three to two. Yep. Okay. And then Mosey from Roe okay. and LeBlanc. Okay. God, the Jula Ball was really good, wasn't they? Holy smokes. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that's a perfect example. I mean, Lash or uh, LeBlanc's Hobie year, he was shut out in that regional. So, I mean, it's. It's not an indictment, I'm saying. It's not an indictment on Lash, but just... Hard again against Michigan. Yeah, Let's right. Not talk about right. <laughs> I don't know why. I was at a, I was drunk at a wedding uh, on Saturday, and I don't know why, but I looked at my YouTube history, and I saw Mark no. Hargan chokes on the open oh, net. And I'm no. like, why did I bring this up? <laughs> just sad. <laughs> sad like every night. time I had a St. Cloud with St. Cloud hockey fans, I bring this up and just cry into my drink. And he defends that defender, and then... The goalie's beat. The goalie was way out. Could have just kicked it in. I mean, I know you can't, but I mean, it would have been better than what happened. Uh, go Huskies, woo. Tommy Novak, right? This pick? Travis. That's it? You yeah. should have known that. Travis, yeah. Novak. Travis. You oh, should know that. Travis name. Novak, sorry. Yes. Yeah, Tommy Wildy. Um, Tommy. <laughs> let's do. Okay, so I already have the best defenseman. Let's go with the best center. That So here we, we talked about how. Wildy's mom said, oh, we're going to get wiped by the Gophers. <laughs> that, then, not, that was not what happened, but okay. Wildy's mom was mom. my favorite Fonz of Wayne song, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's people. I'm sure she appreciates put, that. There are people who put the school on the map. And the greatest center is Matt Cullen. So I have the best defenseman and not the best center. According to you. No, it's basically it's objective. Yeah. It's right. Oh. 90 points, 90 some odd points in two years. The, the guy 
bald as in like, a, like an 18 year old just kicked everyone's ass he was awesome unstoppable yeah, both both numbers in the rafters are now off the boards in the first seven picks which i guess is to be expected. who is the better cullen matt or john it's a rhetorical uh, question so some huskies played more <laughs> yes there are some categories <laughs> sort of in like which the parachute. John, uh, John Cullen uh, has higher numbers. <laughs> sort of like the parishes, right? Some <laughs> parishes played more. <laughs> some some oh, Gino's going to be up in your DMs now. <laughs> he did. Gino's more. probably aware, though. Actually, <laughs> I would imagine <laughs> it's only one that wore a, rain- a rainbow wig, though. So, just the greatest. <laughs> He's so good at the play-by-play or the the color. The color. I really enjoy Gino. Just I need that to be said here on this pod. Is that I love Gino doing those home games. I think he's great. It's it it, it it's definitely a thing where you have to you have to get him. Um, and I think some of our away fans definitely don't. <laughs> so they just really despise him. But they don't. That's they're not. We're not making the broadcast for them. <laughs> I mean, that's also true. And it's definitely not the worst uh, tandem that we have in the NCHC. No, that's our that's our next anyway, snake draft, that, uh, is the announcers. Yeah, back, back to the fish story. <laughs> so, Matt, Matt Cullen, obviously, yeah, deserves to be up there. Again, like, that really started, you know, that class really started that Huskies team. And a big reason why I became a fan. And if you said you're around that 97 time, you know, it could be a big reason why you're a fan too. So it's obviously solid pick. Yeah. Again, it was, Thanks it was very high up on my list as well. So it's a solid pick. Back to back coming around, Eric. Yeah. Three so... defensemen off the board. Where are you going? Um, I don't think I'm going defenseman. I'm still working it through, but. Um, it's funny. I, I didn't want to go defenseman and goalie early. And our friend Zach Landwehr even talked about this in, uh, when you put up this out on Twitter, I just feel like there's a lot of guys that are really in that same area. So I don't think that if you get the fourth defenseman or the sixth defenseman off the board, there's going to be much of a difference. I don't think there's a huge difference between like the second goalie and the third goalie. Um, so with that in mind, um, I'm going to have to go with a player that I did not see play at St. Cloud, but got to see him uh, beyond that, and that is um, Mark Parrish. Um, When I kind of went through and did my prep, a lot of it um, was not just on points, but specifically on goals. I think that there are a lot of guys over the years that you can find who get on the score sheet, who, you know, sometimes they make a, a decent pass and somebody makes a hell of a shot. No, I get a point out of it or those secondary assists. But at every level, the hardest thing to do is find guys who put the puck in the back of the net. Um, Parrish obviously did it in his two years uh, in St. Cloud um, and then had a, a really illustrious career in the NHL as where, well, there are a couple of guys that honestly uh, I probably could have taken it forward there too. Um, and for me, it comes down to he was the only guy of the next couple of my list that was slightly under a point per game. Um, but he just he just he just scored too many goals for me to uh, to to not take here uh, at the back half of the second round. It's an awesome now. Again, yeah, I, I you know, also, you know, didn't get to see him play at St. Cloud State. Um Go Uskies Woo. Were they on the same line, Parrish and Cullen, or yeah. were they split? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, I mean, that's – I know Parrish joked about it um, during when he was uh, play-by-play – or when he was color that, you know, Parrish just put a stick on the ice and Cullen found it all the time. But I didn't know if that actually was the case. I think if you look at those – I think the Matt Cullen scored a hat trick against the Gophers. I think Parrish assisted on all three. Hmm. And I kind of like the idea, too, of, you know, obviously we're not getting as deep into, you know, lines two, three, and four. 
Um, so you could kind of space those guys out, but I love the idea of putting Hardigan and Parrish, two guys that the goalies are always going to fear. Either one of them can shoot. And Hardigan was a guy who, you know, passed the puck pretty well too. So I think putting those two on my top line um, is the way to go. This is a position I did not expect to um, take this early, but uh, to start round three, um, I got to take Bobby Gepford. Oh, uh, oh, wow. Get wow. Our first did not, and I did not anticipate taking a goalie first. I, I am had somebody, sh- I am shocked. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I really wow. thought that I'd be waiting in the wings. One of the last two to get a goalie. Um, but he, 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 to me, he, I think you can make a lot of arguments for two through six, three through eight of the goalies at St. Cloud, you look back at not only his numbers, but some of the highlight reel saves, some of the big wins they put together. He was on an okay team and he ended up with almost, or two teams, and he ended up with almost a 600 win percentage. He got it done top to bottom. Um, Yeah, I'm going to go Bobby here. Wow, okay. Yeah, definitely my my favorite goalie. He was not number one on my goalie depth chart, but he's number one in my heart, I'd say, of the goalies. It was, um, it was, it was, he was one of those goalies where I think you could tell fairly early on to the game um, if it's like, okay, he's locked in. Like, this is, like, we've got this game. Um, and there were sometimes it's like, all right, this game's going to be an adventure. <laughs> let's, let's buckle up. This is going to be fun. Obviously the eight to seven game comes to mind, but, um, it was, yeah. Like, uh, Eric, what you're talking about, like some of the highlight real goals that he had, like just kind of, a he was a, a very athletic goalie, uh, going out there and it was, uh, he was a lot of fun, fun to watch. I have two things to say about Bobby. It, you're right. He's totally fun. And like, he there was a charisma there, right? Like a, just like, so you're right. Just fun. Uh, is it that New York Kings park? It, uh, maybe, kind of you know, swagger. there's that clip where he's like hopping after they swept the Gophers. That, the, the five, three game in Mariucci. Yeah. Right? He's like, yeah. where Marty Miele scored. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he's scored at least four or five goals. Um, <laughs> a total. Um, but he, <laughs> He, you know, the, again, the charisma. But what I like about Bobby, and he was probably my dark horse of maybe picking a little later, but is his stats compared to others are pretty similar. But he played in a time when it was a little more fire wagon versus, you know, more recently, right? I mean, there's a the defensive yeah. structure now oh, yeah. is so much better, and Bobby has pretty similar stats, and that is probably. If you compare to era, makes him better, I think. So I think it's an excellent pick. I, I think so too. He ends up um, with the best save percentage and the second best goals against uh, behind only Charlie. And I think you're right. There were some times where, when who was Weller playing in front of him, really? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> there were some times where it was it was end to end rushes for sixty minutes. The only person playing in front of him, I think, was Brian Patoni. So, I mean, that's just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was he was also on the back door. It was what Ermin to Patoni one timers. Oh. So, I mean, I will have to say what. Yeah, you're, I, I don't know if I'm going to tolerate the Justin Fletcher slander that's going on right now, um, or, or obviously Brockle. the Brocklehurst. <laughs> Brocklehurst. But- but I, but I see, I, I, I get what I get what you're saying. I mean, especially when you think of like the stalwart defenseman that has come through, um, as of you know in the last, you know, decade or so here at St. Cloud. Absolutely. Um, they weren't in front yeah. of Bobby. They were not in front of Bobby. They were not in front of Bobby. That's that. That's for sure. Speaking uh, of stalwart defensemen, here we go. Hundred points. But Captain Jack. I'm going to pair up Nick Jensen with Jack Ashan. All right, you're uh, you're two defensemen out of the way right now. He's a defensive heavy That's... coach. He's like Jock Amir. Look at this. Here. 
I've got Cullen here. <laughs> yes, yes. And when I think of Jacques Lemaire, I think, oh yeah, Jack is five Jacques seven. Would be perfect for that. <laughs> yeah, Jack was so much fun to watch. Like, I think I've been maybe a little bit spoiled uh, watching him. Um. As as of late, so. I think that he his obviously didn't have like the bomb like Jimmy did, but his distribution of the puck was probably better. You know, he's just so smart um, and feisty, and he's he played bigger. And you know, I, I know he gets knocked because he's a little guy, but just strong on his he couldn't knock him off right i mean he's a strong dude and he mm. passed what was he got 80 some odd assists I mean, that's an obnoxious yep. 82 there we go 82 all right ah this is this is this is tough here for me right now my next pick because there's one guy I really want. Is it me? It is. It is not you. You you should have scored more points. True. Um. Uh, but I think I think I'm gonna wait. I think I'm gonna wait on it. But you know what? Um. I gotta say I'm I'm, I'm probably on on the clock here. But um, I'm I'm gonna go just incredible two way defenseman. You get that out. You know what? No, I'm not. I'm not gonna overthink. And Jeff sided it all. Yes. Now I never watched him play, um, uh, obviously. Um, but there's just the points um, that he put up: seventy eight goals, hundred one assists. Jefferson pipeline. Yeah, it's. It's uh, it, it's too many points for me to uh, to to ignore. So having uh the one and two all time points getter in uh, Saint Cloud State history, that's uh, that's uh, and the number one defense points for. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, I, I, I I'm I'm not going to overthink it. That's what I'm just going to pick. It's a quality pick. Andrew, you got the next two, two in a row again. So I got a blah. Figuring he's sort of who's he yeah, passing? He's going to be my playmaker, and I kind of need some finishers. Um, and there's another sort of. Playmaker, but good all-around player as well that I'm I'm mulling over. I suppose I could take them both, but oh, this is tough. Oh, first, I think I'm just gonna get my second D out of the way, and I'll take Nick Perbix, and I'll think a little bit more. About my forward pick that I'm going to make here, but Perbix, give him his due. Um, nah, I mean, strong yeah, skater too. Excellent strong. skater. Yeah, really kind of, uh, I think, matured into a, an offensive threat too. And we're seeing at the NHL level him stepping up his game even more. So even the post SCSU time has sort of his stock is even risen further since moving on from St. Cloud. So, yeah, he was my number three defenseman on, on my board. And so happy to take him here. Hedekin and Perbix as a back end? Uh, I don't play. That's, uh, that's not terrible. Yeah. That, well, that's also the thing is, like, when you're going to be looking at everybody's team, it's like, oh, okay, that's stacked. <laughs> so that's what's going to make this so much fun. And there's there's other good defensemen, uh, defensive uh, you know, choices, too. It's... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still got one left, and we we got the extra D. Um, so uh, that'll be interesting. But 
as far as the up uh, my the what the first pick of the fourth round yeah this is tough the forwards it's just so difficult to separate uh, and, and rank them and especially if you're trying to consider like line mates or potential chemistry maybe I'm overthinking that part of it maybe I should just go with the best talent but it is kind of fun to to speculate how these lines would work uh all right I'll go I want I want a score I want a finisher I'm going to go Johnny Brodzinski I felt like I believe I was following you I thought you were going to go a different way. That's all right. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm interested what, where you thought I was going. Well, no, I don't want to see. Yeah, I don't, don't want, no. Maybe I'm going to cover up. <laughs> I'm sure we'll, we we'll, know. We'll, figure, we'll find out later. But um, I mainly just want. I, I love Johnny. I love Johnny. Johnny in the in the circle. That was just uh, the snipe. The the I, shot. I can. I mean, we got the Brockle horse ping, and then I guess the Nick Dowd ping. Um, but. More consistent pings, I think I hear. I just the resonation of the uh, bar down type goals that that Johnny Brodzinski had, and the fact that he hit the pipe so many times. He he could have easily had ten ten more goals in his SCSU career had he not hit the pipe so much. Uh-huh. But uh, he he buried his his fair amount as well, and so. The last couple of years, we've tried like the Johnny Brodzinski play in the center and the wing and then the circle, kind of shallow and like no one puts it on net like Johnny. You know, we're ringing it around the ring it around the rink and chasing after it. Yeah, on the power play. But Johnny, if he got it, he, he teed it up. It was on net at some point. Yeah. So I'm I'm going Johnny, and uh, I like that. I like that potential pairing. Um, with with Wilbach. well, they they did play together. Not sure if they played on the same line. That was Johnny's first year, right? Was LeBlanc's Hobie season? I think that's right. So perhaps they didn't play uh, together, but perhaps they got got together on a power play. That's that's kind of what I'm looking for with, the, with this pairing. Is is a, is a good power? Play. I, I mean, I think ideally I could have wanted Lash, but I wanted Hedekin as a defenseman too. So. A good power play finisher and just good all around player. I mean, he's not just an offensive threat too. He's he's a good, uh, you know, two way player too. So uh, happy to pick him up here in the fourth round. Seems like a steal. I agree. All right. Um, I, I'm a little bit nervous um, here with this pick. Uh, fourth round, my third pick. I've got Lash and Satterdalen. Jimmy Schultz on the back end. I, I mean, I'm mean, I, nervous, you know, about the defensemen. I'm worried Eric's going to go back to back defensemen here on four five. Uh, but I think I think I need. I'm going to have one of my favorite players distributing the puck to Lash and Saturday. And it's Cal. and and I am so surprised that I'm not going to pick Row here. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm going to go Kosla. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite all around uh, players at SCSU. Um, he was God, awesome. am, I, am I dumb for not picking Row? I no, so. I mean, I, I mean, can't yeah, believe- because he's going next. So don't worry. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and just cause, you know, when I think of Row, um, you know, I do think of him more as the finisher. Um, and also, you know, an agitator and he'll be in the box a lot, but as far as distributing the puck, um, uh, as him seeing the ice, the passes he was able to make, I think probably the second best center pure center when it comes to it next to LeBlanc. So, um, but he's got the scoring touch as well. So I'm going Kosala. I think that, um, I think my best friend Robbie Jackson said that Kelly was the best player he played with in Singleton. It's not a bad, yeah. not a bad pick, considering the folks that you know that he lined up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, put me down for G money there. So uh, we're not thinking about it. We're just gonna <laughs> put a Garrett Rowe in his one million points or whatever he had. His one million points in one million four penalty minutes. 
Look, it was awesome how, you know, Lash scored and taunted a guy, but kind of got checked or whatever. Roll would score, taunt a guy, get checked, and draw a penalty, but then also slash the guy back. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for I, I I guess I don't know what Garrett Rowe was listed at, but I mean, if he was listed at five seven, that's generous. Um, but good God, was he scrappy? He would not back down from anyone or anything, and he sure. was he was just dynamic. So much, so much fun, and when you get the whole dog pound row in for him as well, you know, we'd pretend to have the oars and we go row, row, row. Oh, it was it was a lot of fun to get to get involved with that. So. There's a reason why Row and Lash scored some goals. Yeah. And I still love when he got drafted in the NHL draft and they have like the name placards and they didn't have, they're like, who the hell is this Garrett Rowe guy? <laughs> so somebody had to like go out and take a blank one and get a black marker and write in R O. I'm just happy that they spelled it right. <laughs> uh, Eric. Well, well, Weldy, fear not. Um, oh. I'm not going to go defenseman, defenseman here. I, I'm surprised that I haven't taken a, a D-man yet, um, but I have to take somebody that I had very high on my board um, and am shocked is still sitting here at the fourth. I'm shocked a uh, lot of people round. are still here, but it's one of I those mean, things th- like... That's yeah, fair. Yeah, there's there's. I can't really fault picking. anyone's pick. Yeah. Uh, but, this, but this is honestly a guy I thought... Could have gone in the first round. Uh, he's somebody who I didn't see play at SDSU, but I did say see play uh, in his pro career, and that's Tyler Arneson, um, oh, another God. guy that could, you know, had as as weird as this sounds to say, it, this is a a badge of honor and a compliment. There aren't a lot of guys throughout their college career that score a goal more than half of their games or have over a you know five hundred point five. Uh, goals per game average and he's one of them um he was a guy who uh came at right or i should see say left right before i got to scsu um and again as as a guy who's a center it's nice to have both him and and hardigan although either one of them could play off of the wing so if i'm building a team i feel like between hardigan and arneson i've got my my top two line centers you want to build from the middle uh, but I could also, you know, put Hardigan, Parrish, Arneson out there, and it's kind of not exactly all at the same time, but just kind of one after the other after the other, that era of mid-90s uh, to early 2000s. And I feel like it's a team that's going to do a lot of scoring. With that's that in sure. mind... And I don't know how um, many people have shot a puck through the net. They had to go back like a minute and a half of the play, too. That was awesome. Yeah, and I think the goal light stayed on the whole time. And like the goal judge was like, like goal judge was like, yeah, this is in. <laughs> I think I think there's like a, a an interview with Tyler who wasn't. Oh, he wasn't like uh, there was Tyler Anderson who was pre med and now was in medical school. He wasn't that. <laughs> he was. um, oh, <laughs> and so Tyler said, you know, I shot the puck, and from that angle, it looked like it went in, and I go to college. And it was something to like that. It's like, and I go to college. And I know that because I go to college. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, but then, then when they go review it, Tyler was so awesome. I mean, I don't want to give anything away here, but, you know, they'd have Tyler on the wing, Sam Bear on the center, and um, Dekez on the other wing. So don't steal all these people. But Hardigan <laughs> would be the be the other defenseman on a power play. And. Yeah. The, there were two plays that Sam Pear had. One was to draw the puck to Hardigan for a one-timer. And then the other one was for Sam Pear to draw the face-off to Artisan for a one-timer. And they always worked. It, they, they were awesome. I mean, that, that power play was for Donk. Great pick. My other... Picking this go round is actually going to be somebody who predates all of us, including Go Huskies Woo. Um, I'm going to go Len Esau. Oh. Um, my my philosophy here, and again, you know, we'll figure out where we're pairing people and where we're putting them on lines. But um, goals that are at a premium, scoring's at a premium. It's a guy that I can't talk too intelligently about. Um, but over two seasons. 
He averaged 10 goals. He has a .9 points per game from a defenseman. That's pretty good. And it was in an era where they weren't exactly blowing people away. The, in, in fairness, they were uh, around 500 his two years there. But, you know, 19-16-2, and 17-19-2. This is pre-WCHA. He he left uh, as, as they were still an independent. And uh, I'll probably uh, look to maybe go a little more defensive with my next defenseman. But right now, uh, I just like the idea of those four, you know, playing on a power play together and, and, and teeing it up. Only familiar with him, they because I think at the National Hockey Center, they I don't know if they still do, I would assume they do, but they in the concourses, they have like the NHL jerseys yep. of St. Cloud State mm-hmm. alums or you know, guys that played for St. Cloud. Esau, I think, was it the Flames? I think it's a Flames jersey. I might be wrong about that. I think he may have played for the Islanders, I think he played for a couple of different and just cups of coffee. But I was unfamiliar yeah. with him, but. I'm drawn to the name because Isa is a name that's in crosswords a lot. It's got three vowels, uh, four letters. So I've actually clued a uh, Isa in a puzzle in reference to Len Isa, uh, which gets away from the biblical, uh, which typically because Esau is a, by a name in the Bible. It was a Cain and Abel's brother, I think. Um, and so I jumped at the opportunity that there was another Isa other than that. And so that's really my my, and yeah, my he did only memory of that of that name or my only connection. And he did play for Calgary. Uh, also played a couple of games with Toronto okay. and then Edmonton. Okay. So all of his NHL uh, uh, teams were uh, Canadian teams. Played mostly in the AHL. And we kind of talked about this going in that this wasn't you know this isn't a draft of you know what did their pro careers what did they become um, but just for their production at uh, their time in St. Cloud and uh, you know seems like a guy that again. You know, how many how many college coaches say, boy, I could really use a guy on the blue line who can, you know, who can not just feed other guys, but put the puck in the back of the net. I, yeah, obviously predates all of us. And, you know, I could think of probably the second most famous Husky to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs, or at least have a couple games. <laughs> Um, uh, you giving us a preview of something <laughs> next so, pick no, man, you, oh, you, you're, oh, you're on oh, deck oh, here baby. you're on deck Kowalski's woo who you got so I'm looking at my lineup and I got Nick Jensen a guy who I think is the, the best defenseman at Tinkle State the best center Matt Cullen got Jack Sean, who is probably a top four give or take defenseman and Garrett Rowe I'm missing a little size so what do I need? I need I need a thumper on the wing who can score, who can pass, and who can also have seven hairy buffaloes. <laughs> I was just about to type his name, too. I was like, I don't know where you're going with this one. <laughs> so put me down for the Maloney Pony. <laughs> That's a good pick. As soon, so as, here, as soon as you said size on the wing, I'm like, it's Bugsy. It's for sure. <laughs> there's, there's, yeah. One thing that is probably more impressive, so Ryan had... I don't know, something like 100. I'm looking at here, 140 points. Some of those teams were pretty bad. And he stuck around for four years. I think he could have played in the NHL a little faster, but he stuck around and played. I know they lost in Duluth, I think, um, in the final weekend, I think, um, or in the first round, whichever it was. Um, But that dude was a baller. He was big, and he was always around. And those teams weren't great. some of these other teams that he he was on, uh, I, I'm talking about the later on. Like he was on the really good, like the 01 team, the, o, the 2000 team, the 2001 team. But as those guys left, that 03 team wasn't great. Uh, they were okay. Um, but he still stuck around, and uh, he put up a ton of points. And he's a big dude, and he is probably a functioning alcoholic, so let's put him on the board. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you said, it's – I. If I didn't know so many people that were there that night of Ryan Malone drinking seven hairy buffaloes, I would have I would have thought that was a lie. But it doesn't seem possible. It doesn't. Like not only for your liver and for your brain function, but just also your taste buds. <laughs> like after yeah. the what do you mean after three you yeah. can't taste it anyway? <laughs> No, I'm yeah, probably for the next year you're not going to be able to taste anything. 
he he lost his taste buds before COVID. He just <laughs> Harry it's buffaloed just him to death. Harry buffalo poisoning. They don't have a vaccine for that. <laughs> what um? What's your go-to buffalo drink? Everybody go. OG. Okay. I would say none of the above, but if you press me, I guess the OG. What even is no, not in? The press. Uh, it's not the press. It's MCs. What did, what did I say? You're welcome. Uh, you said press me. Yeah, that's good. But it's not the press. R.I.P. <laughs> the press. Uh, but <laughs> um, variety is the spice of life. Uh, anytime I go in there, I'm like, it's all the same. Whatever. Just bring it over. <laughs> Just sit at the bar and just say, "Keep the buffaloes coming." What and mix even it up. is the um, hairy buffalo? Do we have? I, I, I say, I say, do we have the me. build of the drink? I'm kind of curious because tequila. I was not a big fan of it. <laughs> I don't know what else. I just know there's, there's probably one. You, you probably are best too. not yeah. to know exactly what. And I'm sure it's a Last top secret recipe. They don't want that secret to get out. <laughs> they they don't want that out. That there's a reason why it says home of the hairy buffalo. Yes. It's the, the secret. The secret ingredient. The Huskies hockey podcast. The secret ingredient is Pepto Bismol. <laughs> and love and love and of love course. and also a little bit of hatred, probably. <laughs> um, Last time I was there, they they broke a, one of those hurricane glasses because they instead of using an ice scooper, they used the hurricane glass to <laughs> oh, scoop the ice, and they broke the yeah, ice. Rule number and one. Did, do you think they dumped that Ooh. ice? Absolutely oh not. God, and, probably uh, not. <laughs> did I order a hairy buffalo? Absolutely, I did. It was just uh, like risk. It's a risk yep. reward. It's, I mean, it can't be any worse than the taco bar that they had out there on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> quarter quarters on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. So um okay, well, I mean I, I'm a big fan of the dirty buffalo or the buffalo on the rag. So those are my two go to. Tropical classy guy. Tropical buffalo is a little too much. <laughs> so um I got the next pick. Um and I'm gonna be honest, I don't really I am not uh, aware of um you know this uh this person very much uh before my time but mm-hmm. um going on the defense uh, you're talking about uh the Bloomington pipeline uh so we'll uh go with there with uh Kelly Hulkgren Oh I thought it was going to be Ryan Lemare <laughs> It was not <laughs> for a few reasons um but I mean, when I see a stat line for a defenseman, twenty eight goals, seventy nine assists, hundred seven points. Um, there was a few other options I could have gone. I also tempted to go another forward here, or get my first goalie. But I decided um, that uh, I'm going to shore up my defenseman um, right here with somebody I have never seen play and know nothing about. Sounds perfect. So, sounds just, sounds great. Back to back picks, Andrew. I can't believe you guys like none of you had a different Harry Buffalo recommendation. Ah. I've probably, I mean, I, I was not a big fan of the the OG. Malone probably drank more in that one sitting than I ever combined <laughs> drank. Of, I, one was enough, and the two or three more than I had than that was was more. Yeah, that was too much. Um, I was I was a fan of the the OG because I knew that it would get me in the least amount of trouble. Like I legit when they started coming out with other flavors, I was like, "Well, okay, I'm gonna say something inappropriate there. I'm gonna do something inappropriate if I drink that one." So that was originally. Now as I'm older, I'm like, "All right, the, honestly, I'm I'm good with the tropical. I'm good with the husky." But yeah, when when I was a student, it was you know, it was the one that it was an economic move. It was yeah, this I mean, thing that's was going to save me value fifteen dollars. Yeah. yeah, it was this going to save me fifteen dollars over the course of the night. Yeah. And that, that means a lot when you're a college kid. It's kind of like it when you're going sure to the does. Touch Tune, and you got uh, I would do anything but for love, and I won't do that. The eleven minute version. It's only one credit play on Touch Tunes, so it's, it, there's your value. <laughs> eleven minutes for, for one credit. <laughs> there you go. Back to back meatloaf references in this. Um, All right. That's why people tune in. Yeah, that's exactly. That's what. That's why we're uh, we're lighting up the charts here on Spotify. So for the final pick in the fifth round, so I got Labla and I got Brodzinski. Labla is my center. Brodzinski, I mean, played center, but we're gonna put him on right wing. 
want that shot, want his finishing ability. So I want I need a lefty. I've always I always I always liked him more on wing. Agreed. Yeah. Um for sure. Yeah. And so I But he was he was a solid uh, obviously anywhere he played, but wing was where I think of Johnny. So there I mean there's there's probably a, a good amount of choices that I have here from for lefty shooters. And I'm even wondering if this guy is so under the radar that I could wait to pick him up. Because I feel like he's forgotten. Uh, but look at his numbers. Andreas Nodal put in a good two years for the Huskies. Almost identical seasons in 06, 07, and 07, 08. 18 goals, 28 assists, 46 points in the first year. 18 goals, 26 assists, 44 points in the second year. So, I mean, it's a better clip than Brodzinski, better clip than blah, blah. Uh, you know, disappointing in his NHL career, which it might factor into maybe his obscure status at this point. But I remember he was probably Matsko's first, like, big get uh, as a recruit. I wish that he would have stayed one more year. I think he yeah. was one of those guys that was like, should he stay? Should he not? And I'm totally aligned with people when they leave. I think like Nick Jensen, he left after three. Like he wasn't going to get yeah. better in college, right? But Nodal was. But he still has scored. He still scored that zillionth overtime goal That's against right. UMD, and that is a all time banger. Yeah, and so I'm 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 happy. And again, I'm wondering if that one was was one that I could have snagged in the eighth round. Uh, no, good. That's good to know. <laughs> no, uh, so That's, yeah, no. no. And 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 Nodal was one of those guys. Like like uh, Go Huskies, Wu was saying is he he left after two and to each their own. But he was the first one that really shocked me. There were guys who you're like, all right, this is their time to go. And what I remember that season coming to an end, and he kind of last eight to ten games was going through a little bit of a slump. But I remember telling a buddy of mine, well. I guess the good news here is after, you know, he kind of struggled at the end, that probably is the difference. He's, you know, coming back for a third year. And that was the first time I really got a gut punch of, wow, I was, I already penciled him in for, you know, what's this Huskies team going to look like next year? And a lot of it's going to be based around Andreas, who welding misspelled, I'm pretty sure. Yes, yeah, there's, a, there's another A in there. Oh, I forgot the A. I was going to compliment you. You nailed Johnny without the H, um, but uh, struggled there with, with Noodle. At least didn't call him Noodle, Noodle which is what my dad oh, called it, Vienna, Austria. Like, come on. Like, it's, it's close. Him, it's him and Roe are from the same hometown. <laughs> yes. well, they're both from Vienna. Vienna. <laughs> uh, so. Um, yeah, and, you know, kind of what you're also piggybacking off you, Eric. I mean, you also put him you know back you know on that team you know in 08 09 that's i believe that we we talked about earlier we lost to clarkson right in 08 yes um yeah so i mean that extra year and then obviously you had some you know freshmen who were doing you know pretty well as well with you know fessler and the block coming in is um you know, obviously Mar- Marvin also with some size. Like, uh, another year, him getting better, I think, would have done that team wonders. And I yeah, think but, that's yeah. kind of – um, and I believe for the longest time, or, I mean, for a time, he was the highest drafted I think Husky. That's right. I think he was second yeah. rounder. Second rounder. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he was early second round until um, – Till Chalowski was the first first rounder was it yeah. if there there could have been a higher second rounder uh in between but i don't think so i don't think so either and speaking of and all people talk about... leaving too early <laughs> yeah well <laughs> and waiting for someone to take chelowski <laughs> and and you know when you look at not Jimmy, only show my, what my that disagree did, with you <laughs> what when you when you look at what that did though not only for that huskies team <laughs> But also, what would another year have done for Nodal? I mean, it's it's yeah. all, you know, the butterfly effect and who knows what would have happened. And I think 
part of what you know cut his pro career short was you know the the injury bug. But still, I I I too think if he'd come back for a junior year, would he have maybe had a more prolific pro career because of it? Who knows? And that eight, oh eight oh nine year was a disappointing one. I mean, they were around five hundred. That was the year that they lost six times to the Gophers, uh, and and then drew them in well, the first. I'm round. I'm including yeah. that in. I mean, in that, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, Nodal could have been the difference between that team, perhaps making a, another tournament bid that year. Uh, they were not not bad. Uh, they were they were just so close, and they had a lot of tough losses. So, yeah, what could have been? I guess that's an interesting hypothetical. If he would have come back for that third year, but a good solid two seasons. Uh, and as we're mentioning, like the offensive, it was not as an offensive uh, game in college hockey at that point. You're you know, more than a point per per game player. That's pretty darn good. So. Yeah, happy to scoop them up and happy to sort of finish my kind of top line here uh, with those three. So, wrapping around again to the sixth round. Again, I, I'm pretty committed on waiting to the end to get my goalie. Uh, so, I suppose I'm getting into my extra forward and D we can do that right Weldy? like that the extra D and the extra yep. forward can be at any time can choose them anytime all right he's the he's the highest remaining forward on my chart I mean defense too it's there's some possibilities there as well all right Let's do it for my extra forward, which no no disrespect because this guy was a hell of a forward. We've mentioned him already. Nicked out. Uh, he was gonna be my sleeper pick. Kind of lost a, lost in the fray. What an awesome pick that is! I think it's an incredible pick. Uh-huh. Two way player, uh, penalty kill, power play. Hope we make the finals. The hair. Frozen four. The hair, the is, hair. is a big one, a uh, big factor. Obviously, the NHL career. I mean, yep. And great pick, great and bravo. Hobie finalist, yep. uh, Hobie hat trick finalist. Uh, the, I mean, he's got that. We mentioned the ping against Notre Dame, overtime yep. winner. A great, great goal. goal. Uh, great goal. Yep. Were we all at that game? Well, you were at that. I was. I not. thought you were. Eric and GHW. Yeah. Yep. I was not. It's a, it's a good game. Uh, and probably, I mean, the, the, obviously, I think the, the capstone memory of his St. Cloud State career was, was, was that. But, uh, you know, also just with the kind of LeBlanc season, Dowd was sort of right up there as well as far as impact players. And, and that era uh, of the Huskies, he had a lot to do with it. So... And he's just kind of like he said, go Huskies, all around player. He's almost a, a great fit for my extra four because he can kind of do it all. Um, yeah. And that's that sort of versatility goes a long way. So, yeah. And, and again, didn't think that I, I, I almost didn't think he would slip this far. So I'm, I'm glad to pick him up. Uh, what first first pick the seventh round? So yeah, happy. He was my next mm-hmm. pick. He was my next pick for sure. Happy to scoop him up. Yep. And obviously, I mean, doing a lot of charity work right now, but all around nice guy. Um, oh, I think he he is the only Husky to uh, give me a shout out on Twitter, unprompted. <laughs> um, and uh, he said, you know, and it was after the Jared Raby goal, and it was, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, unprompted. He just said, you know, shout out to Wildebeest and all the Huskies fans in attendance. Well, this was pre my more clappers at too. So, um, the the fact that you know it was just unprompted. How did he know? Just, did you have a sign? I don't know. I have no. So he's just a I, stalker. That's what, he's just a Even, stalker. There's another. Creep. Never no, mind. No. Not nice. That's another uh, notch in his belt. There. Um, power yeah, play. I mean, in kill, fairness, <laughs> th- there were eleven of us losing our damn minds, like four rows up. So it. 
<laughs> Let's put it this way: you you were you were well spotted by you were all the easily spotted the cardinal, yeah. yeah, faithful. Um, and I didn't know until I had to go all the way to Huntsville to learn that uh, Nick Dowd's parents are British. Um, That's right. This lady is like talking to us and starts like, "Oh, this is brilliant." And we're like, "Oh, who's that?" And they're like, "That's Nick Dowd's mom." We're like, "No, no, I'm sorry." Uh, that's a British lady. <laughs> Who the hell is that? And they're like, yeah, no, Nick Dowd's parents moved to Huntsville for, you know, rocket science. And when Nick decides that his mom did a poor job of taking a, a, a group photo and makes fun of her, he does it with a little British accent. So, there you go. <laughs> that's awesome. I I did not know that. So, um, all right, uh, my pick. I've got, uh, you know, Lash Satterdalen uh, is receiving passes from Kosala. Um, my defense was Schultz and Hunkgren. Um, you know, I'm I'm thinking about there's there's one guy that's staring at me who I think is probably one of the guys that always gets lost in the shuffle when it comes to. But I think I'm going to hold out and see if I can get him next round because I want to get my goalie. Um. And, you know, I can go, obviously, you know, a couple ways here on goalie, but I am going to go with Charlie Lindgren. He was my number one. So, um, just, uh, overall, Lindgren, um, you know, most goalie wins in a season, and uh, just his... um, save percentage all of his stats are just right up there like you said yeah it's it, it's really close when it comes to it but i think uh i think charlie i would consider him probably just the most solid one and left hand yeah yeah the, the, his style was a little uh more s- sound and less frantic than like a bobby type yeah <laughs> frantic i like that's a really good way of putting it bob <laughs> It was. Yep. Anybody see him as starting starter for the NHL in the future? Charlie, he just signed with someplace out in Europe. What? But like, this is news to me. I know he was with uh, with Washington. Uh, yeah, I think he just signed. Really? I, I I honestly I think his ceiling would be, you know, being an AHL starter maybe trying to be that second guy yeah it, it, as as much as we sit here and say how great they're like that that bugs me when you know anybody goes after you know an nfl starting quarterback um a a starting goalie in the nhl and it's like there's 30 of these guys in the world yeah so when you're sitting there going oh this guy stinks like well he's the top 25 at the world at what he does he's he's he, he's he's decent he's just not you know he he's just not the Vasilevsky, but he still still pretty damn good. Yeah, his numbers last year weren't as good as I thought they were, but Washington was not uh very good last year either. Didn't have a great team in front of him. I can't see I'm not I'm like looking at his elite prospects page, it doesn't mention any signing with Europe, but uh uh I have been out of it hockey wise the last few months, so I could be wrong there, but um You've been, you've been loving the uh, loving the twins, right? Is that uh, always? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard to got my uh, hundred bucks it's on their uh, under eighty four wins. It's looking all right, but under under eighty four. Yeah. You should have parlayed that under eighty four, but still win the AL Central. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's my pick. I have. Nick Jensen and Jack Sean. Matt Cullen, Garrett Rowan, Brian Paul. Sort of backed myself into a corner. Um, All of our teams are stacked. (laughs) So I'm going to go with, this is more of an emotional pick, and I'm going to apologize to my best friend, Robbie Jackson. He's not going to end up on my team. Whoa, spoiler alert. Yeah, it's tough. Um, We're supposed to golf with him here pretty soon, and he's probably going to be bad. Yeah, he's going to be pissed. <laughs> and the last time we played, uh, he only beat me by one. And he's a professional athlete, and I am not. <laughs> so I just want to get that out on the record for everyone here, that he beat me by one stroke. 
I'm going to go with whom I think is the most underrated Husky player of all time, who did it all, who scored 100 points on some of the shittiest teams that San Jose State ever had, including the, the final years of uh, Craig Dillon. Ooh. But mm-hmm. my favorite is three goals against the Gophers started it. It's jumping Joe Jensen. You just love those Jensens, don't you? <laughs> I love them. Just, just give them to me all. Yeah, we mentioned him on last week's podcast. Uh, and yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a good pick. I'm blanking now. Is that Owen or Ian? Ian. It's the, yeah, it's the same it's as Jensen. Well. They're brothers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep, yep, absolutely. Wait, really? <laughs> I don't think so, but... Uh... God, I can't believe I fit on that. I can't... Uh, that's, like, really embarrassing. They're, they're, they're the same as the Lazat brothers. That's you, right. You know those Yeah, guys. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. There's a guy... Yeah, that, I... that dude scored so many points, and on just the worst teams. Yeah. Those are some pretty bad teams. I think if you put him on a team that's three years later... He puts up 140, or three years earlier, he puts up. Or three years earlier, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah, 02 to 06, that was some bad years. That was, you know, so so my first season following the team was 0102. First time they were ranked number one, they had a they. The 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 bottom dropped out so much two to three years later that like I legit thought like, Oh, did we, were we just a flash in the pan? Are we going to be, you know, just Anchorage and Michigan tech for the next 10, 15 years. So obviously it was a nice surprise that, that that wasn't the case, but no, you're right. Jensen's one of those guys that gets forgotten about because he was, he was carrying the load, not single handedly, but just not with enough support. Now, now we're now we're starting with the Conrad Reader slander. <laughs> Jeez, Peter Zabo's bad. <laughs> Peter Zabo, like no respect for Brock Hooten. <laughs> Hooter scored in that eight to seven go- eight, eight seven game. Yeah, ah, uh, that's true. He did. And Hartman Hooter, just a Har- who's Hartman, who. had, Hartman had two that game, right? Just a who's who of Husky hockey. And then Ryan Patoli scored what five? <laughs> At least he sco- he's just scored again. <laughs> uh, Eric, you got back to back. Jensen's um, a solid pick, and yeah, like you, like you said, like he carried through some really lean years there. Um, obviously, at least none of my or one of my next two has to be a defenseman. Um, and we established, cause I was on the, we can have an extra goalie. I might do a Friday, Saturday tandem, but, uh, we, we x that. Um, Dan Dunn. Anybody, anybody who knows me, uh, is not going to be surprised at all. Um, the captain of my team, uh, is going to be, uh, number seven from Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, a uh, Garrett Raboyne. Um, he's a guy who I swear with like 10 games left in his sophomore year, just decided to score a goal. And then like went to the coaches like, Oh, did you, did you want me to do that? Cause I could do that. I, I haven't all most of my first two years. And if you look at his production from years three and four on, it was just like, he decided, Oh, I guess I should score goals too. But you know, a, a three year captain or a, a three year, a captain, the captain for the last two years of his career, Big hits on, you know, number one draft picks in the NHL. Thanks for playing. Um, <laughs> you know, a guy that I feel like, I'll be honest, the one concern that I have here with this team is, you know, Hardigan, Parrish, Arneson, are these guys all going to get too big for their britches? And I feel like Raboyne could put them all, you know, in their place and lead from the bench. Uh, there's a reason that he's a D1 coach now. Um, Talent-wise, I don't know if he makes the all-time team. But when you factor in all the intangibles, uh, Garrett's, Garrett's got to be uh, on my blue line. How many wins do you think Augustana is going to get this year? I think they're going to be better than people think. So, like, better um, than I'll be honest, St. Thomas's gonna, first year? 
I, yes. I, I, I honestly I haven't seen their schedule, so I guess it. I mean, would they're playing a lot of that. I'm hoping. That they're they're playing CCHA teams, sixteen but not games as a CCHA member, versus the CCHA. Right? So yeah. one series each against each of the other eight teams, and okay. then I know they're playing like um, Arizona State. They're playing Denver. Uh, their non conference uh, Omaha, I believe, is opening their new uh, building. I think. I think they could win 12, which isn't I'll great, go under that. respectable. I'll say like eight. eight, which is not bad, because I think St. Thomas won three games in their first year, and they were terrible. Um, I think yeah. they'll be better I th- than I think they could. I think they could go 10, 10 to 12 wins, you know? The, the I, I think they'll be that, better than people think. I think the difference is that Garrett Raboyne is a good recruiter versus yeah. Yeah. Mr. Bean or whatever. So Yeah, and they've, they've been active in the <laughs> transfer portal. We got, what, Brand and uh, uh, Zemer from St. Cloud. We'll be yeah, my boy Zemer, yeah. Yeah, and and he's going to be um trying to get a lot of the guys who were chomping at the bit to get to the U, you know, don't end up in Minneapolis and he says, "All right, let's, you know, show you can, those guys uh what 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 you can do." That and you can play this year versus waiting 2 3 years. Yeah. Got a brand yeah. new facility. Yeah. That that's for sure. That's for sure uh, a big part of it too. Yeah, I'll be interested to see them. Uh I'm sure that St. Cloud will, will get them on the schedule. In the next couple of years, you think with the Raboin connection itself. Uh, who do you think? Okay, who do you think is going to be our next coach? Will it be Nick or Garrett? It's probably between those two, I would say. Um, unless unless Larson's here for twenty years, but he's not. <laughs> if not, I think those are your two I, I, obvious candidates. Yeah, Brett's going to go to the NHL. I would imagine. That's, you that's, a, so? that's a take. People are laughing at me. People are laughing here. I wasn't laughing. I cracked a I, smile. I I, 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 I was. Eric, Eric laughed. I don't. Eric laughed. I, I was. I, I don't. I feel like the, the, the number of jobs that go straight from college to NHL are so few and far between. Even if he's deserving, I just feel like the, Haxel needs to win the Stanley Cup next year for somebody else to get a look in the next five. I, I don't think it's the the right thing. I think Axel doesn't know how to the, win a championship. That's not going to happen. That, so uh, they should fire therefore, him. Fire Larson's him. not going to the NHL. <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying he's going to be a head coach, but I think if he's going to go anywhere, I don't. He's either going to go to Duluth or be an assistant coach. That's kind of. That's I would be, I would be shocked if he goes to the NHL as an assistant. I think Duluth is the natural choice that he would be Sandlin's replacement once once he decides to hang it up. But which might be in five, ten years. And that's when that's when we get the Oliver or Raboin question. But who knows? Oliver might might have a but job. Nobody on... answered. Nobody nobody answered. Nobody answered. Who Nick or Nick or Garrett? Uh, uh, uh I would probably Garrett say, has a tattoo, I, right? Garrett has a tattoo. I would say uh, Yeah, I would I'm say going Oliver. Garrett. <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take Oliver in that. I'll go Raboin. Who's your Rebs. pick then? It's Revs, yeah, I think. Yep. He'll have the head coaching experience. I mean, if it was tomorrow, right? Because college, anyway. Oh, all right. Yep. What Marty, um? Uh, who was that? Uh, that hip check. Who was that on again? The, the Raboins. Yeah. Um, like, Eric Johnson. Oh, Eric Johnson. Oh, Just that's right. Absolutely leveled him. That was, I know. I know that somebody place popped who, so hard for that. I know somebody who who uh, knew Eric Johnson and left him a voicemail, and he unfriended her on Facebook because of. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, I love college hockey. Yeah, yeah, there's no other place where you get a story like that. Um, my next pick is going to be my extra forward. Um, and again, as I've kind of shown with the three guys that I took before him, I put a premium on guys who can put the puck in the neck. I, I cannot believe that he is listed as Joseph on Elite Prospects. It's Joey Benick. Ah, Joey um, Benick, so good. St. Francis' finest. Um, he seemed to sc- I, I mean, I have no information on this. I have no stats to back it up. But he seemed like a guy who could get cold for a little bit. But he scored goals in yeah. bunches. Like he was just a guy mm-hmm. who, you know, he'd either ha- he'd he'd have no goals on a weekend, or he'd have three. And some of those multi goal games came up against, you know, some of the some of the biggest opponents. Mm-hmm. Joey Benick was great. He what a good dude. 
good score, lots of points. Um, he was actually the pick. Was I going to go jump at Joe Jensen or Joey Bennick? So I think it's an excellent choice. Um, Bennick, I remember because what was it like the first week of practice? He got injured. Yeah, broke his um, leg. Fresh freshman year, and then I remember there was there was a lot of talk. Do you hold him back or do you? put him in and his first year was that 12 13 year wasn't it correct to go to the frozen four or and so it was like you know they they put him in it's like all right they must really see like a chance to go ahead and you know make a run at this and they sure did and bennick was a huge part of that freshman year um and really i mean just kept scoring the rest of the way good choice very good yep a value seven Go Huskies woo. Jeff Finger. There we go. In the seventh round, too. The seventh Value round. Pick. Jeff Finger. And that's the... Uh... See, I, I was um, considering him as my extra D, but it wouldn't even... I'm thinking like extra attacker and... I'm not even putting him on the defense necessarily. Bar attack. I'm putting him just like just someone to punch. He'd somebody. be three yeah. defensemen, and he'd be in the middle. So I, I got my middle finger for my extra attacker situations. <laughs> yes, that was a whole big setup. I, it was very good. I, 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 so to be fair, I know that Travis is the one who started the Jeff Finger thing, um, and I've sort of rolled with it. Jeff Finger was actually pretty awesome, and like he would hit dudes and smile and like. <laughs> You could tell he loved it. He loved people. it. <laughs> loved it, yeah. Just a masochist. And so, like, I thought, like, if you were going to have a dude who was just going to, like, murder people out on the ice and then love it, like, just have a psychopath out there, let's just go for it. No one's going to fuck around. You got Garrett Rowe and Jeff Finger on this team? I'm going to be spending some time in the box. It's all right. You're going to spend a lot of time in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Jensen had a handful of shorthanded goals, though, right? People are going to be afraid. Yeah. People are going to be afraid. Yeah, that, that's true. And I, he, and with with Finger when he went to the pros, like the biggest knock on him was he's getting paid too much. Like his con- he wasn't the one who said, "Hey, I mean," he in essence said, "Yeah, I'm willing to sign on the dotted line." But that's a that's a front office issue. So at the end of the day, like, what a great insult! Like, hey, buddy, you're getting paid too much money. Yeah, I'm also, I'm a hockey I player, wish I'm getting paid pay too, much too much money. Cool. Yeah, that's right. Cool. That was like right in the heart of Toronto's like LOL phase, like one of the more LOL y parts of their LOL Moments phase. Too. Um, Jeff Finger. Now, because he was, was the, the Avalanche, didn't he actually have like a solid playoff? I think that's yeah, why they signed good. him. And that's why I think they it signed was the him, year that they, they got him a contract. That they beat the Wild in the first round. Uh, the Avalanche did. I, I, I think that was his. That was that playoff. I think. Who was that coach at Wisconsin? Mike Eves, right? Yeah. And he had a kid that played on the, the development team, right? Patrick Eves. Patrick. They, when the Huskies played Patrick Eves in the in the development team, he checked Pat Eves so hard into the boards, kind of like along the bench, that Pat Eves crumbled into the bench and puked. It was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> He got on all fours and puked in the bench. Pat Eves did. That guy deserves a spot on my roster. Yeah, that's there. You go. Um, that did kind of throw a wrench in my plans. We gotta pick Jeff Finger. I actually was gonna pick Jeff Finger next. Um, so I obviously um. You know, I've got my extra forward, extra defenseman here. So I might call maybe an audible, but except like like right now when I'm looking at defense, like I'm going to be happy with a few of them. So I think I'm just going to let this one roll, and I'm going to go with. Um, you can pick a defenseman. I am not. I'm going to pick a forward. And I'm going to pick somebody who I've never seen play. So I got nothing to say from Excelsior, Tim Hannes. Yep. But, I mean, you're looking at 73 goals, 99 points, or 99 assists for 172 points in 144 games. I mean, 
my team's going to score. That's that's for sure. I, I did not peg you as the guy to to do the blast from the past team. I mean, you got Hult. I I wasn't either. Heinous. That's good. Well, at first I thought it was going to be Euro or with uh, Hardigan Parish and Arneson with his front line. And Lenny Esau. And Esau, yeah. yeah. And Esau, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, so that that's where we're going. I'll pick. I'll pick my defense here um, after you go, but uh, I think any defenseman here I go kind of last. I, I'm going to be, they're pretty much, they're very similar, so, in my opinion. So, Andrew, the next two picks. Um, my last two picks. Your last two picks. Getting down, this is the last pick of the seventh round, and then we're starting the eighth, coming down the home stretch here. So I got a goalie and I got a defenseman to pick. So I'll get my goalie out of the way here. I won't take Brimsek because that seems, I don't know, gaming the system in some case. Although, just look up Brimsek. I, I did some deep diving on that today. Didn't realize it, how how much of a sensation he was in the NHL. But as well, he did say, I think he played 13 games for St. Cloud. The St. Cloud was it normal school or teacher's college? It wasn't even SCSU at that point. Yeah, I think it was teacher's college. It might have yeah. been normal schools. I don't know. But I'm, yeah, I'm not going to go with Brimson. Not um, I'm going to go Scott Meyer. Uh, Ooh, Scotty Meyer. I, I also yeah. had Mike Lee in this uh, conversation. I had Farragher to a lesser extent. I even had Jace Wozlowski's Xbox on this list. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I'm gonna go with Meyer. God, that guy that guy would have been so good if it wasn't for Halo. <laughs> it's so funny how much you two just drag on David Rennick. I it, it, he was it not on does. My, he was not on. I know. Uh, we all know. <laughs> I was pretty safe in not picking David Rennick until the eighth round. I uh, whatever. <laughs> I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that I rag on him, but you, you both do, yeah. No, I don't. I would say, like, like if I were to pick Rennick or Lindgren, I would pick Lindgren. Would sure, you disagree? But, that, but over Mike Lee or Brian Farragher? No, absolutely not. Well, okay, yeah, that's true. That That's true. Andrew, I think you're alone on that island. Yeah. And maybe that's I say fair. that about Mike Lee because he never beat, beat North Dakota. So M- Mike, Mike Lee might have been, prior to his years at SCSU, most talented guy to come in. I, honest to God... I don't think he was ever fully healthy at St. Cloud. I think he was always playing at 75 to 80 percent. Like he was so highly touted and he was he was a good goalie. But at at the end of the day, I I don't think I would have had him. And he he wasn't in my top six or seven. So. Yeah, there's Lisa, Scotty Meyer. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so so Meyer is a guy that I don't have the, the personal connection that I'm sure both Eric was was he was he still there when for your first year? No, so my my, my first year was was was, uh, was Dini right. Weasler. Okay, so he would have been basic, yeah. basically basically yeah. a two year starter in ninety nine two thousand and then two thousand two thousand one. Yeah. Um, but again, high offensive era, and yep. yes. you know, these GAs, you know, low twos, nine twenty and nine twenty five save percentage in those two years. Um, and he faced like forty five shots a game. No, for sure, yeah. Yeah. similar to. Yeah. Where Bobby played that is that fire wagon hockey. Yeah, and so I think, and I, again, I, I like spreading out players from different eras, and I don't have a player in that early two thousands era uh, yet. So I, I did want to throw throw a bone to that particular team. Or holds teams. holds the record for most shutouts in a season with seven, and that was in the 01, 2000, 2001 season. No, that was ninety nine oh, two thousand right. season. That's weird. That's the year that he had slightly higher goals against, too. So he must have had a couple of clunkers that year to offset the shutouts. But, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm happy to have him as the goalie. And so that does it for my goalies. For my last pick, I got an extra D. I keep them proud to make Travis man. Or Andrew Procto. I have both of those guys. They're actually the top two that I have on my remaining defenseman list. 
they're the yeah. I, I had pro, same here. pro and then and proc now. <laughs> Actually, yep. I do v Westcott up there. Oh, do v. Yeah, you laughed he, about he Fletcher. I had Fletcher on the list. I had Taj Melson on the list. I I I didn't laugh. Uh, Fletcher, Fletcher actually. Yeah, is... I'm not gonna take Fletcher, but he was on my list at least. But like, he was solid. I have Will Borgen on the list. I'm not gonna take any of these guys though. I'm gonna take a guy that's currently no. skating with the Huskies, Dylan Anhorn. No. Ooh. Oh. Oh. I was wondering if you if someone was gonna get Anhorn. And For a last it's... pick in the draft, sure. Look it's... at that production from last year, and I mean, you only played half a season. But shit. Half a season, like sixty percent of a season, let's say. Yeah, that's true. But stretch that out over a full is year. It, is it because of the it, the shotgun it's, crush? It, that's is, that's uh... a big part. It's a big part. I hope he uh, incorporates some of that into like a goal celebration for next year. Be, yep. be, that would be nice. All of his goals. Yeah. <laughs> I think there will be a, a couple of them next year. So, yeah, I, I, and he was only lower on my list because I wasn't really factoring in current players. I mean, for my forwards, I, I guess I didn't either. I, to be honest, I don't think I did either. For, for my forwards, I was, I had Cranola and he's coming up on my list here as a potential pick, but I'm, I'm happy to have what I already have, but I wouldn't have minded taking him for instance, but from the current team Anhorn, I think is the guy that I'll go with. So, um, with, um, with, with Anhorn, I, I had him on my list too. And honestly, I was really tempted to, if he was still sitting there with my last pick, there are too many guys who played three, four years that I would have wanted no, ahead of him. But it is kind of that it's, it, it was the same thing with when I was looking at forwards, if you're going to go, well, small sample size, but if we're just talking about the time they were there, Grant Crookshank, right. like the guy scored yeah. every game. It seemed like he scored this past year. So yeah, is it only a, a, a one season sample size? But if we're talking about how good were they just while they were at St. Cloud, you could make a case. It was one that, you know, looking back at it, I wouldn't have booted any of the forwards that I got for him. Same thing with, with, with Anhorn, but I can't I can't fault you there. I, I was kind of, you know, mulling down that road as well. And then going back to your 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 goalie pick too, because we kind of went straight from one into the other. Um I, I think Meyer's one of those guys that gets forgotten about because yeah, he only started for two years, and you have to factor in, like, the teams around him. He played on good teams, but not, like, amazing, amazing teams. And the the, the goals in, infl- like, if you look at his numbers versus some of the other goalies in the WCHA, he was just ahead above them. Like, like they're, they're, those were some high-scoring games against Denver, Minnesota, North Dakota. All the other goalies, like, prior to Meyer, their numbers are atrocious. Their goals against average, some literally are like 4.2, 4.6. So the fact that Meyer put up good numbers in, in that era, uh, I think it says a lot about him. I I was just tempted, or I was less tempted to grab a goalie because I, I hadn't seen him play. But based just off the numbers, I, he's he, he's a top three guy, I think. Yeah, happy to take him. And happy to take Anhorn. I, I, like, how the, I like how my eight look right here. And it's interested to see how everyone else... Finishes out. It's um, yeah, and uh, you threw me for a loop. Not gonna lie with the Anhorn pick because I was prepared to select the one you didn't pick between Prow and Procno. Well, you, you um, have your so now you have your pick of either of them. Now, now I have to make a choice between the two. You love Procno. I do love Procno. Proc, yes, more like. <laughs> uh, but I, so to me, it's a coin flip. So like. If I still had the wheel spinning uh, to see, um, you know, I'd probably go there. But in in the end, I'm, I think I'm going to go local, and, and I'm going to go Ethan Prow. Ethan Prow, that's his name. That name again is Ethan, Ethan Prow. Prow. It's wild. I I do think that of all the people, like they're one of my questions. People always ask, "Oh, what is the what are the questions you have for the pod or whatever?" One of them is, "Who's the husky that surprised you to make it, and who's the husky that?" Surprise didn't make it, and I always answer with uh, Proc. I uh, for some reason I don't know what I don't know what it was. Maybe there was something I don't that I don't know, but I thought he was really good, and I think that yeah. Thanks for just plugging in my goalie pick, which is for sure David Ray. Uh But I'm always <laughs> surprised that uh, Proc no didn't make it. Guy, you know, he's a guy that you know. Would have. 
or at least had some type of, you know, Ethan Prowse in the AHL still doing pretty well. I feel like Procto could. Yeah, it's that's kind of surprising to me as well. Um, and again, it was a coin flip between the two. Um, and you know, obviously overlapping the eras and whatnot. In my head, at least, um, they're. Uh, Prow, if I remember correctly, a little bit of a slower start to his his campaign, but came on so strong, and I don't know, he was um, he came into, you know, just a solid, you know, almost hundred point score there on the defensive end. So that's uh, that's where my pick is. I got to see Prow's uh, last game in the USHL. Um, the Bucks head coach had just been fired, so they pulled up a scout to sit on the bench as the assistant coach and Bowers and I were the only people starting a Marty Mielli chant from <laughs> section eight. And everybody around us is like, who the hell is that? We're like, he's a former Buccaneer. He's a former Husky. Now he's on your coaching staff. We, we, we were ecstatic at how cheap uh, drinks were at Buccaneer arena. But um, I remember watching prowl that game and thinking, God, this kid's not ready. Like, you know, it was, he was one of those, he was kind of on the cusp. Was he going to stay another year in the USHL? And yeah, he might've gotten out to a little bit of a slow start, but I thought pretty early as a freshman, he established himself. He he, he didn't feel comfortable um, offensively early on, but I remember thinking halfway through his freshman year, I was dead wrong that like, no, he was ready to come to the, the NCAAs and, and perhaps you know, I, I saw his last game in the USHL and they were so far out of it and he had nothing to prove and whatever. But I, I remember first half of his freshman year thinking um, this kid's going to be a, a, a solid, solid guy on our, our blue line for a while. Yeah, and for, those who, I mean, and those for, and for those who are listening and not watching this, David Reddick was added into my call <laughs> log because I don't have a goalie. And absolutely, I was going to take David Reddick here. So thanks for that. So, yep, I, I, it wasn't announced. So yeah, David Reddick is my my pick here, my goalie. And yes, you you yeah. said that I ragged on him, and I was critical of him. But I will, I mean, hey, most wins all time for a St. Cloud State goalie. Playing five years helps that, but still, it's an achievement. The most shutouts, right? Uh, four plus. Yeah, uh, four plus. Um, and I'll, I'll give them this, the 2021 frozen four run national title game run, probably the MVP of that, of that run, um, of the tournament run that year. He was, that was the best he played as a Husky during those three wins. And he wasn't even, he wasn't the issue against UMass. Uh, and so, and he was the goaltender of, perhaps the best era, like sustained run, five-year run of, of the Huskies. Yeah. Basically started every game, or at least the first year, I guess he split some time with Jeff Smith. But, uh, yeah, I had some, you know, and you look at his numbers, his save percentages were not elite. I think there are some fair criticisms had about him, but very important in the history of this program and certainly is deserving of being picked in this draft. It was... It was weird how sometimes those first shots would go yeah. through, and then it would be also weird mm-hmm. that the leakers would go through. And I, yeah. I, I agree there. There were some leakers. Uh, I will always wonder about the what if he did not get, like, yep. Yep, life-threatening was... pneumonia. Yes. Yeah, yeah just, I was just going to bring that up, too. Because, I mean, it's hard not to talk about that. And um, obviously we were very critical of Caster at the time and even to begin, you know, before the season started too. Um, but it's, I mean that, especially with how that Quinnipiac game went, it was just like, uh, oh, that was just the frustrating what ifs there that, that come from it. Or the, the yeah, what the, ifs from the, the 18 and 19 seasons. Uh, you know, I, yeah. I feel like that Atlantic, the, just getting past it. I think if they would have won those games, He's at least would have made the Frozen Four in those years. It was just kind of a mental obstacle that they couldn't they, they beat themselves both years. And Renat gave up a bad goal in each game. But um, it's a lot, a lot of what ifs with those teams, uh, unfortunately. But you know, as I was saying, some definite high high points uh, as well. But God, and, when he he was on, yeah. he was on. I mean, yeah. it was. 
And and the criticism of Caster for that Quinnipiac game is fair. And you never know what would have gone beyond that, but you cannot convince me David Rennick plays that game we don't beat the Bobcats. Probably by multiple we, goals. Next Net next it's Michigan, and then you know who know, and maybe it would have just been what, but it also could have been a run. You never right. know. Um, but uh, I, I got an opportunity to see the one time I uh, ever broadcast uh, David Rennick was uh, uh, when he was in Green Bay in the USHL, and it was a scoreless game. Went into overtime, no score, and uh, Des Moines clipped them in a, a shootout. But I remember thinking, I'm really glad. Uh, this kid is going on to SCSU. Had a very, very good career. I, I can say that, you know, maybe I would say going in, I uh, was hoping for a little bit more than he did. And to, to say that is is splitting hairs because obviously he has all the accolades that he did. Um, the only thing that I would say uh, against him is uh, this, this you, you guys can throw this right now to KFAN and the preposterous statement tournament. I'm going to tell you right now. They're listening the, right now. So. The most undervalued player that is not going to get selected in this is Jace Wislowski. Like that sounds crazy, <laughs> but go back and look at, go back and did. look at the like, stats. Yeah. Well, he, that one he, year he was, he was one of those guys that we think, Oh, he wasn't that. And then you go back and go, was it him? He was, uh, he was good on some not great teams. Well, yeah. That one year was it? Oh, eight, the Clarkson year. I mean, I think he had a nine thirty save percentage that year. And, and, and one of the, and one of the years, like everyone's like, Oh, they had a good team. I'm like, they had a one line. They had, it was it was him, and then it was the the row lash line, and other than that, they they didn't have that much. Ironically, point um, uh, nine three zero was also his uh, uh, GPA. <laughs> so <laughs> that's Brown ver- Brown versus Board of Education. God, there's there's only a couple of uh, us Cho forums that I remember very succinctly, and uh, when we played Brown and. Yeah, Euro, you started that one, didn't you? That yeah. was. Yeah. I, I, I got I, I got a show rep from Donna saying, God, I hate you, but that was a funny line. <laughs> Brown versus B O R E D Board of Education. Um with Poor the was mis- wonderful mom too. She came to the dog pound a couple of times, hung out with her and Yeah. yeah. Um Hated the school work of college. <laughs> with uh with the Mr. Irrelevant um, pick. Quickly though, well, uh, yeah. Before, go ahead. Um, I just want to say quickly because that's how we do things on this podcast. Um, go ask Izuul. Were you thinking about Rennick because he signed with Europe? Yeah, uh, maybe that's who I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, he so signed. Once with you the were talking about Rennick, yeah. So yeah, I, I did I, some I don't some googling on Lingren. I think he's still with, with sure. Washington. So oh, is he? okay, great. That's unless, good. unless it's a scoop. Are you scooping yeah. us right now? Is, is I, I, know nothing with David. I know nothing. No scoops. Yeah, uh, yeah. They were... I, I'm gonna I'm gonna call BS if in one month it turns out that Lindgren signed in Europe. Uh, my best friend Robbie Jackson is playing in uh, Switzerland. Best, best friend How's that you that? didn't draft. How's that? Yeah, I know. Excuse me, man. Don't show him this, okay? I'm I'm making a full sheet for you. Are people? Do I have people here in camp? Is it my camp? Yeah. Yeah, there was two of them. They were fighting. Oh Christ! I thought it was mine. That was really. Good I've got a cat. So we no. got three cats. Does everybody have a cat yes, except I have me? A cat. God, he's quiet. So right the, I she. think I think the reason they're fighting is because I shut the door so that the roommates wouldn't be heard in the podcast, and they're like, "What the hell? This door is never shut." <laughs> There's going to okay. be World War Three because of this podcast. It sounds pretty bad. I was really worried it was mine. Like he was in distress. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> No, you're fine. Um, Mr. Mr. Irrelevant. Eric with the with Mr. The Irrelevant pick, pick um, this is how nerdy I am. Um, not only do I need another defenseman, but it dawns on me that I have uh, two uh, right defensemen, so I, I definitely need a left defenseman. That's, and, that's way um, too much thinking for this podcast. There's a couple of guys there that I considered. Uh, I'm considering Justin Fletcher. I considered Derek Eastman. Um, but at the end of the day... I have to do with the man. I have to go with the man who split a puck in half in the USHL, and that is Andrew Prochno. Um Didn't have as impressive uh, goals per game as the other two, but I liked him just top to bottom. And in general, uh, when I was kind of looking at this, I, 
the game gets better. So the 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 best players who are playing now are probably a little bit better than the best players playing ten years ago and twenty years ago. And with that, you know, Procno was there eight years ago. Um, and and I've got plenty of guys on this team that can put the puck in the back of the net. Um, I feel pretty comfortable with Procno's two way game, um, and a guy who could. Wasn't known as an overly physical guy, but a guy who could, you know, lay the lumber as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel like when when you guys were sitting there talking about like, oh, Prow versus Procno, I'm like, all right, I could end up with Justin Fletcher and be happy with it. Um, but the way it, it, it fell, uh, when you, Weldy, were sitting there flipping a coin, um, you know, you called heads, I was getting tails because mm-hmm. I would have gone, I would have gone Prow uh, if you, if, uh, if you'd gone Procno. So there we have it, the uh, the the all time Huskies draft. Um, let's go ahead and uh, run through our team really quick. Eric, uh, go ahead and start us off. Run down who you got. Um, so um, do we want to do it by positions or just by the order they were drafted? Uh, do it by positions. All right. So um, Partigan, uh, Parrish, Arneson, and Benick are the forwards. Um, and I could make an argument for going to top line or maybe splitting them up uh, and going two and two there. Um, Esau, Raboin, and Prochno as the defensemen. And then the one and only 47, Bobby Gepford, in between the pipes. There we go. That's that's just solid. I mean, uh, I don't think any of us are going to look at these teams and go, uh, that's boy, true. boy, those guys... Those guys couldn't beat Wisconsin. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not true. Everybody can beat Wisconsin. <laughs> this is true. And they do. Yep. Go Huskies Woo. I have Matt Cullen centering Rowe, Malone, and uh, Joe Jensen with the defensive uh, trio of Nick Jensen, Jack Ashan, Jeff Finger, backstopped by David Rennick. I think it's a solid. No one's scoring on this team. Let's be honest. And if they do, they're going to get punched. It's on the. It's on the. It's on the penalty kill. Is where you get scored (laughs) for sure. It's on the penalty. Because I mean, Jeff Finger, Garrett Rowe. I mean, Malone had to had a ton of penalty minutes too. He did absolutely. So that's uh, that. That that is your goon line right there. (laughs) Who could score a ton of points as well? Um. I've got uh, centering Cali Kosala, centering uh, Jeff Satterdolin and Ryan Lash with Tim Hanu, uh, as Eric corrected me on. So I. That uh, wasn't me. What was that? That wasn't me. I thought it was heinous. I wouldn't know how to say his name either. Like heinous crime. I thought that's how you pronounced it. Oh, see? Well, I thought. Hanu? I thought like they were talking about an S is silent? No. Is there an. Oh, go ask, go ask we'll he's put it in the chat. Uh, over the U? Your your correction needs a correction. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's Hanu, but that's fine. It's not a bad that, Well, that's fine. what we call because well, we're tight. Yeah, it's <laughs> good old Hanu. <laughs> that's, we, we hang out on the reg. So, anyway, he's, uh, he, you know, he scores a lot of points. That's what I care about. Uh, defenseman uh, Jimmy Schulte and uh, Kelly Hultgren and Ethan Prow and my goalie Charlie Lindgren. Andrew? So I got Drew LeBlanc, Johnny Brodzinski, Andreas Nodal, and Nick Dowd as my forwards. On the back end, I've got Brett Hedekin, Nick Perbix, and Dylan Anhorn, and I got Scott Meyer in net. That's yeah. That's uh, we have. This was a lot of fun. Anybody um, got like some, what I want some to names do? like of others receiving? votes yeah I, I was gonna say like who's surprised that not on this list my first one was Motsko. joe Motsko, sure. like the fact that he wasn't on and we can you know talk about Stand paradise joe <laughs> yeah paradise son of Bob. i mean right? how about how about fred dips here i i had him yeah, i had him uh as one of my golden oldies i also had jeff passelt but Weldy said we weren't uh, considering the D two players, so I couldn't take him. I, see, Plus, see, I think you could consider him, but that was something I was going to mention about Brimsek. Brimsek put up great numbers. I, like Brimsek was a great goalie of his era. The problem with comparing eras 
is if you took anybody from the 90s and got a breakaway on him, oh. they'd fake him out of his pads. He'd have no idea what to do. Matt Cullen comes down the slot and he's just like, Oh, Bertha, I write you, dearest, but I am going to die for this man is going to rip a slap shot I don't think Brinsek had a forward pass, though. <laughs> I don't think it was illegal back then. Yet. Yeah. yeah. That was legal yet. Drop passes only. So. um, But, uh, yeah, DKAS, I mean, Um, obviously. uh, Nobody took Andrew Gordon, did they? Nope. No, he was. Yeah, Flash Gordon. That was was one that I thought would go, but. Guy that was high on my list. It's it's tough when there's only, you know, what is it, 12 forwards that go. I mean, we're already two hours long here, but if we. Yeah, you know, even we'll, had six one. or eight, like. I had this guy in my Nick Dowd eight. sort of category. Surprised he, I don't think he was mentioned. Blake Lazat. Uh, yeah, a couple of years. I think that maybe. No one, you know, and none, uh, nobody picked either of the first round draft picks. We've mentioned Chalowski, but Ryan Paling <laughs> as well. None of the Palings get, <laughs> oh, get, uh, get selected. No, no. Patrick Russell. I had a soft spot for him. I, I do love Russell. Newell? I've always I had Newell also. Newell? I love uh, yeah. Newell. God, I love Newell. I raved every podcast about Newell in our first iteration of this. This, this is one when I was talking to some of my friends and I said, you're going to be amazed at some of the guys that don't get touched. Not only was he not selected, has has Hanowski's name been I don't think so. I, I had like him on my at list. At some point he was... Yeah. You mean it's, you mean Ben Hanowski of Deerwood Bank? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Deerwood Bank's own Ben Hanowski. He'd be the financial advisor for, for the uh, for the team as well. Yep. <laughs> and uh, of like newer guys, you know, talking about like Brimsek and how older players trans translate to the modern game. Like, yeah, I think like the the skill in the the current age is probably like a, a step or two, like clearly above. Like you go back, go back a couple of decades, even. So like, a guy like Sam Hetches, I think, is like uber talented. I think he, I mean, his injury uh, issues at in St. Cloud maybe hampered his, uh, or lowered his ceiling a little bit. But I mean, he would have been a, a guy I would have been fine taking. Um, a guy like Okabe as well. Um, again, it's hard harder to place the more recent guys because we don't have the distance from their career to uh, maybe compare them, I guess, um, because we're still like this. The career is like either, either fresh, freshly over from the college level or like an Ann Orn or Okabe's case still uh, underway. So that was that was a uh, challenging to sort of consider that. But yeah, Kevin Fitzgerald, even I had him on my list. So I tried to try to eighth year senior. <laughs> there we go. Fitzgerald. He's got the experience. <laughs> so. But yeah, this was fun. Yeah, I'd say even before Weldy kind of floated that idea of, you know, D1 era, my thought was I'm probably not going to take anybody pre-D1 because of the competition. It's so hard to figure out, you know, okay, well, you know, these guys were were scoring goals against, you know, northern, southern state, whatever. Uh, I, I kind of naturally cut it off at the D1. I was surprised I got a couple of guys uh, from before my time, um, but I just felt like, you know, okay, well, Parrish and Arneson, I didn't see them play at SCSU, but I got to see them play and fit, felt pretty comfortable that, uh, you know, all time, that, that those are guys that even though, yeah, I think that the game is faster in the 2020s, um, there are a couple of guys that I thought could, could hang with, uh, you know, if they had been born, you know, 15, 20, 25 years later. I'm looking at the uh, the four squads here, and I obviously have an affinity towards my own and Jeff Finger, but I think, just looking at this, I think Andrew wins. I think this team is top to bottom the best one. I, I'm biased, I, but I tend to it, agree it, with you. <laughs> it was it was interesting because I did think Drew LeBlanc was a reach. Um I and and I was like, okay, that's where he's gonna go. And then Perrin obviously with Hedekin, I was like, okay, that's that's good. But like I think if anything was an actual team, like I think it yours would win. 
<laughs> like if this actually like just just from like puck responsibility both ends of the ice complete players i think you've got a list of like everyone's a complete player i am curious because i was wondering if it was a reach as well would anyone who would have taken him in the second round if i hadn't no no i wouldn't have uh, i'm gonna be honest with you i i would have taken him pretty late in this and it really? more had to do with my philosophy of trying to find guys who were more on the goal scoring side but it was a different philosophy if i was sitting there going i want to find somebody who's a more of a two-way guy and a disher um and then obviously you add in the intangibles and that's kind of where you know i probably reached on raboyne um but no i think he i think he would have been i think he would have been safe to come back to you at that second go around but i can't speak for everybody interesting yeah i, I fairly or freely admit that there is a lot of emotional attachment involved with LeBlanc. You put his numbers up uh, to other St. Cloud players or even the rest of college hockey. I mean, there's an, a good argument to be made. He's the worst Toby Baker winner. And I don't say that yeah. to dig him. It's just, it, as you said, well, he, it was the right year for him to win that award. Was there but, any, and by definition and, and everything that happened to him and him coming back from it. And you could roll your eyes about the character portion of it. But when somebody oozes that much character and still put up the points that he did along with it, it, it was kind of a no-brainer, in my opinion, it, that it, he won over uh, It was a Goudreau. reason that Dowd got in the top three, too. You know, right, yeah. A lot of this. Right, right year and the and the character and, and all that. And he also had the character to say that if he would have won, that he would have uh, <laughs> just given the award to Johnny anyway. Hey, he, he he Johnny can take the Hobie Baker. He got Paige. I, th- I think he got. I think he made out all right. <laughs> yeah, I got the win on that. I one. was also thinking too. We got four teams, and this is stretching back. I guess a little bit beyond the D one era, but four coaches essentially: Herb Brooks, Craig Dahl, Bob Motzko, Brett Larson. Do we want to like pick a coach? Ooh. Those are four pretty decent candidates. I mean, <laughs> well, these years. I know who I'm not just, picking. <laughs> well, I mean, it's really interesting considering Andrew's got uh, the last pick in this round. <laughs> no, I mean, I. It, it's funny because I, I think that like our teams were shaped very differently. I clearly put together a team that I said uh, first to nine goals wins. Like we're gonna be in. Some like eight six yeah. games. We're we're gonna we're gonna get That's up and down the track. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I hate so to Craig say, like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't want Craig Dahl, and I'm not picking <laughs> Craig Dahl. But based on my lineup, Craig, and here's the worst part about it is you know the important game is going to be a Saturday on the road, and since we already won on Friday night, we don't even hope need to try split. on Saturday. Yep, hope for a split. split. There you go. Uh-huh. Fair enough. I know, considering that I've got. Uh, one, two, four, and six all-time leading scorers on my team, too. I'm giving you a run for your money. Uh, when it comes There's a couple of my guys left early, so yeah. mm, points per game. Mm. You, yeah. you, you're you mostly four-year guys, aren't you? Mostly. Oh. Oh, entirely? Mostly? Not Lindgren. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Oh, try, try to three. It's kind of interesting to see if there's like a coach that fits these teams. Like, I mean, Andrew, you would you would be, I would say Brett based just that's on kind of what age. I was thinking. Like you you definitely uh-huh. had the the most, uh, like you you have the youngest team as far as like their age now. I guess that leaves uh, Go Huskies with the consolation prize of Herb Brooks. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, that's a good thing, but also, like, you get Herb Brooks, and he's already figured out where he's coaching next, so he's like, (laughs) you get, like, half of Herb Brooks, which is still pretty good. (laughs) I'm gonna be in New York next year, it'll be fine. I'm just looking, I'm I'm just looking at your lineup, go Huskies, and I'm just like, God, I want to see Rowan Malone on the same line. (laughs) Just chaos. With finger on the back end, everyone's gonna have a broken bone at the end of the at the end of the game. It's exciting hockey. It's not. Yep. It's not. It's an adventure. 
Sure. That there's there's some uh there's some grit and sandpaper on that team. <laughs> Maybe that's the kind of people I like. A little bit more uh thumpers, you know. Yeah. Just a there little bit go. more action. Perfect. So um well I'll um you know my my plan here is I'll uh, create a little uh, list for everybody and um, we'll uh, maybe have a little bit of a poll, see how that goes for for a week or two, and just uh, yeah, it's gonna be you know vote on it. Don't vote on Jeff Finger alone, but if you if you do, I understand. But you can't. The the people have spoken. The people have they, spoken. They, it's in God's hands. Whatever just, they do, they do. I just really hope it's not like a ninety percent. And then everybody else is just split between the rest of the ten. I mean, but he's I can he's, see that his happening. team's got my vote, so you know. <laughs> Fair enough. So, um, yeah. Well, th- this was fun. Uh, thank you, uh, obviously, to our special guest uh, Eric Gohuskis Wu. Uh, appreciate you guys coming on. This uh, this worked out really well. It was awesome. Thank you. So, so thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, until next time, go Huskies. Woo woo. <laughs>